Jacoby, welcome to Full Frontal. The president held a rally last night where he showed that unlike those coastal elites, he knows what everyday Americans are going through. The time has come for voter ID. You know, if you go out and you want to buy groceries, you need a picture on a card. You need ID. He thinks they card you at the grocery store? <laughs> it might clear things up if you know that the grocery store is South Florida's top gentleman's club. <laughs> but the real story from last night's rally is that it was apparently brought to you by the letter Q. Adherents of the QAnon conspiracy theory were out in force. Now, most politicians probably would have tried not to appear in the same frame with people who believe that Hillary Clinton is the mastermind of an elite pedophile ring with Tom Hanks and a pizza restaurant? <laughs> QAnon is the conspiracy theory that the deep state is real, Donald Trump and Robert Mueller are secretly working together to fight it, all Democrats are pedophiles, and there's no such thing as climate change. Now, if that sounds crazy, you have to remember that they already bought another conspiracy, Trump being good at his job. Now, <laughs> You may think that technology has run out of ways to ruin our lives beyond spreading conspiracy theories like this, stealing our data, providing our president with a Twitter account, and creating Logan Paul. But this week <laughs> has brought yet another upgrade to our modern cyber hell. Up next, should the government allow you to access directions about how to 3D print your own guns? These 3D printers can accurately manufacture so-called ghost guns fully functioning weapons that are not registered or traceable, and because they're made of plastic, they could slip through security checkpoints at airports, prisons, even Capitol Hill. Sneaking guns into Congress? Jesus, isn't it bad enough that Ted Cruz manages to sneak in every single day? <laughs> Interesting coincidence, since he is also made of extruded plastic. <laughs> Luckily, it is not yet legal to email someone a gun because a judge issued an emergency injunction against it. Apparently, the injunction just read, we're 3D printing guns now. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> but who knows how long that'll hold. By next week, people could be popping out ghost guns like Shrinky Dinks. Now, who could possibly be into ghost guns? Something so dangerous, it's literally two of our scariest words combined, like scorpion IUDs or Nazi straws. Can someone please make me feel less terrified about this? The reality of it is, though, to create these things, you are going to have to spend several thousand dollars at least on the type of printer that would be able to create the parts and put such a gun together. So, in practical terms, it is still wildly more efficient and effective for criminals and terrorists and anybody else to simply go buy guns, either on a legal market or on the black market. They can get them much better there and they're much more reliable weapons than anything we're talking about here. There are much easier ways to get guns. You can buy one for me out of the back of my truck in the CNN parking lot. I'm sorry, I'm being told not to encourage the audience to buy black market firearms. Back to you, Anderson. Who is the guy who sued to be allowed to DM guns? He may surprise you. Just kidding, he's exactly who you think. What makes you comfortable with a world where people can pump out guns in their garage anytime they want to? What's gonna make me comfortable is when people stop coming to this office and, and acting like there's a debate about it. The debate is over. The guns are downloadable. The files are in the public domain. You cannot take them back. You can adjust your politics to this reality. You will not ask me to adjust mine. Who would have guessed that a guy who self-identifies as a crypto anarchist would be such a prick? But <laughs> Wilson says he just wants people to be able to make guns in the comfort of their homes. Maybe a little too much comfort. You can make a 1911 in your kitchen naked in your bathtub if you want, and no one has to know about it. Sir, are you single? <laughs> feeling Cody Wilson 3D prints his guns with one hand. You know, I think we're gonna be hearing a lot more about this fella, specifically the headline, Idiot Shoots Own Dick Off in Bathtub. <laughs> Now, in addition to narrowly deciding not to support nightmare guns, last week the president also gave farmers a totally unnecessary bailout. He blindsided congressional Republicans when he announced that the government will pay $12 billion to bail out farmers affected by his tariffs. Cool! 
whistle. Guess what, old white men? When you dog whistle about welfare queens, you're actually complaining about other old white men. Now, essentially, the president is issuing aid to cover up the problem he created by starting a trade war with China. This sunburnt warthog created a massive, costly mess, and instead of ending it, he's paying $12 billion in taxpayer money to keep it going. Now, I realize this is all very technical, and I don't want us to get too in the weeds on the subject of trade, so to explain this more clearly, it's as if the United States is a hotel mattress, and Donald Trump has decided to pee on that mattress. <laughs> the mattress of America, which is bad because Americans still need to sleep on that mattress. In this metaphor, sleep is turn a profit on soybeans. So <laughs> Donald Trump is making all of us use our own money to pay for a big, huge newspaper to cover it all up. But surprise, he still plans to keep peeing on the mattress. <laughs> And finally, CBS president Les Moonves is in deep trouble for sexually harassing female colleagues. Or maybe he's not in trouble at all. CBS president and CEO Les Moonves is the latest high-powered media executive to face allegations of sexual harassment now. An investigation by The New Yorker details allegations by six women of harassment, intimidation, and retaliation. So far, he's been given no orders to step down. Yes, who could ever bear to get rid of the creative mastermind who developed Hawaii Five-0 and Hawaii Five-0 Miami? <laughs> Les Moonves may be a brilliant TV creator, but no cop procedural, no matter how well-crafted and original, is worth ending a woman's career to shut her up. So in the words of one of the immortal characters he helped create, it's time for this Moonves to be eclipsed.